I was checking out one day at the giant store, and the lady looked at me and says, what do you do for a living? And I thought, oh, great, you know. And sometimes I get, you know, whatever they tell me, you know, I give a little crazy answers. And uh, sometimes I make people guess. I said, I'm in ministry. She goes, that's it? She goes, I come to your church. <laughs> and I'm looking like a deer in the headlights, like, I don't think I've ever seen you. And she goes, we come on Christmas Eve. And I said, oh, I missed you this past year. She goes, we didn't make it. <laughs> you think I'm kidding? That's true. <coughs> Some people feel pity for me, like I live too much of a sedate life. To know today is the same, but the wild thing is, she identified me with church. We went, Robin and I were at, a, I was at a speaking engagement on Friday night in Allenberry. And I walk in, a man who I don't know perks right up. Hello, Reverend. I really want to thank you for preaching the word of God. And I'm thinking, who is this? And he goes, I heard you preach on Thanksgiving evening at the community service. And the other people are going like, oh, that's nice. You know, I, we don't know whose life we're going to touch. We don't know how God is going to use us. And sometimes we forget how much God is with us. In Matthew chapter 1, and this descriptive passage that we probably most can quote inside and out. I have been captured afresh and anew how much God is with me and how much he is with you. I have read these passages like you so many times especially if you start in the New Testament in Matthew and you begin to read. And we sort of want to skip a few through the lineage of Jesus. You know, so-and-so begat so-and-so, do da And then we get down to the real text part. You know, every one of those people was important in the lineage of Jesus. And I, I look in there, And I find some people who, here comes Ruth. Here comes people that are uh, maybe not what I would have gotten the idea should be there. And I think, well, who are we that God would be mindful of us? I, I'm very humbled by his coming. Matthew chapter 1, Matthew reports to us now the birth of Jesus Christ was on this wise. When as his mother Mary was espoused to Joseph, before they came together, she was found with child of the Holy Ghost. And so here we have the incarnation of Christ. The birth, the Holy Spirit having come on Mary. I haven't figured that out yet. I know up here, I, you know what, I wasn't even consulted. I, but I take by faith that this is true. Because a perfect God had to somehow get into an imperfect world. Verse 19, then Joseph, her husband, being a just man and not willing to make her a public example, was minded to put her away privately, privately. And I think, you know what? Here's a guy faced with an impossible situation. To everyone else, it looked one way. To him, with a broken heart, his mind is full of doubt and fear. Mary is tells him her case, and Joseph is just befuddled. There was a lot of stress going on here. Here's the 
Here's the good news. While he thought on these things, behold, Kettering translation, Shazam. Pay attention. The angel of the Lord appeared unto him in a dream. When he was stressed to the limit, God came to where he was. Stacy was giving her testimony to someone today who has gotten stressed to the limit to let you know that God knows your dream and he knows the stuff that's come against you. And he has a plan for you. Marie played Emmanuel now knowing that's why it's what I was going to preach about. Because God has a plan for this service. This dream is saying, Joseph, thou son of David. Notice he didn't give him, he had thou son of Jacob. David, a man who was after God's own heart. Hey, Joseph, I know your heart is just like your great, 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 great. You'll put all the greats in there. All your grandfather. Your heart is after God, Joseph. That's what, that's the reading between the lines story here. Son of David, if you're not to take unto thee, marry thy wife. How did he know that Joseph was upset? How does God know what I'm going through? Because he does. He's God. Fear not to take unto thee, Mary, thy wife. For that which is conceived in her is of the Holy Ghost. Now you're talking Star Trek thinking here. He has now boldly gone where no man has gone before. Hold the phone, Irene. The Holy Ghost has come upon. Now, you have to remember that this is a messenger from God. Joseph, a godly man, recognizes a godly messenger in the dream, and he says, don't worry about it, son. I've got things under control. There are some times I need that word. Amen. Don't worry. I've got a plan. And sometimes you and I... We're part of the plan, but we're not even making the plan work. God says, I've got a plan, and I'm working a plan. Hang on for dear life. Joseph. Jeffrey. I've got a plan. I'm with you so far. Verse 21. She shall bring forth a son. Oh, yes. Every man wanted a son. Thou shalt call his name Jesus. Wait a minute. Why not Joseph? After all. Firstborn. <coughs> Joseph. Uh, why? Jesus. Now, this was a common name. We think it's like, you know, he was the only one with the name Jesus. Uh, you know, not true. Half of uh, Central America is named Jesus. Jesus. God is with us. Yeshua, it was a common name. But he's going to make a difference in this baby named Jesus. Mine is capitalized. Because this one's going to be different. For he shall save his people from their sins. Ooh. Change of plan now. Not only does he have a name that says God is with us. Emmanuel. But now he's going to be a savior. You ever get into something that you're in way over your head? Joseph goes from utter despair to way in over your head. I'm not sure which was worse. Natural fears take you one place, but then he enters into the realm and he says, oh baby, out of my league. So his total dependence would be on God and not of men. Now all this was done. You know, we skip through these verses. I'm just sort of slowing down to let them sink in a minute. Now this was done that it might be fulfilled which was spoken by the Lord by the prophet saying and this is from Isaiah chapter 9 verse 6 Behold a virgin shall be with child and shall bring forth a son they shall call his name Emmanuel which being interpreted is 
God with us. He was going to change the whole course of direction. We know, we, we know this some 2,000 years after. But just think about it. My question is, is God with you? And even more important, are you with God? God with us. John says, and he became flesh and dwelt among us. We beheld his glory as of the glory of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. We saw him as being God. God with us. So many names for the Jesus. Transcendent. We don't even use that word anymore. But we needed someone who went beyond. Trans. Beyond. He went beyond the bounds of earth. Uh, he exceeded and he exceeds what we can do as a human being. He goes beyond. Omnipresent. Everywhere. All the time. He's a God who is with us. Imminent. He is right now. He's here now. And Emmanuel means that God is here. Right now. He is it's the same as being incarnate and made flesh. He is present. Don't you think our world should rejoice about that? And my question is, why don't we rejoice about that? Let's just bow our heads for prayer for a moment. And let's ask God to birth in us a new thought. God is here. Heavenly Father, we thank you for your word. Thank you that there's some stuff we have to take by faith. And we can't do this ourselves. We're not smart enough. We couldn't save ourselves. We couldn't save ourselves out of a paper bag. So you sent us help from outside so that we might become the righteousness of Christ. Thank you for being God with us today. Help us to walk with you. Be in us and walk through us, we pray for Jesus' sake. Amen. You know, there's two couple things that are just, you know, pondered in my heart. You know, if you read the book of Luke, which is sort of Mary's side of the story, Luke, being a physician, gives us Mary's lineage and sort of fills in some of the pieces that Matthew doesn't fit in. It says, and Mary pondered these things in her heart. She not, and pounded them, if you were here for the, you know, uh, for the devotion that Pastor Mike gave. Pondering means to roll it over in your mind. Pondering means you're running down the rabbit trails with it, trying to figure out exactly how does this fit in. There are times when we ponder the word of God and we say, all right, now how does that apply to me? First off, I, we need to know that Jesus totally identified with who we are as human beings. He totally identified. I think that's point number one. <clears throat> it's probably a longer sentence than that. But when we think how Christ identified with us, what did you ever go through stuff and say, I wonder if you did this? I've had some interest. You, you know that, how many you know that guy that does all the dirty jobs on the cable TV show? And he goes and works. And, I've had some interesting jobs. One of them was to clean out underneath the scales at the Lancaster Stockyard. The cattle were above and the pigs were above. And what was below? This was before OSHA got involved. I'd probably look like this. I would have looked like a spaceman. At this time, how many of you have watched the old Wild Wild West stuff? I looked like a guy with a bandana there that was robbing the bank. And I would go underneath there and I would take a, this little broom and I would clean around. There was a sort of a, a brick, uh, concrete corners. And then to clean the pinions for the thing. 
And it's hard for me to believe that Jesus was down there. And then I was thinking about how beautiful heaven was and how it would be to come to earth and thinking, well, you can relate. I guess you can relate. It was a filthy place. And, and then the, the real thrill was when we would test this buffalo scale, they would drive. This buffalo scale was from here to the wall. And we would take these 250 pound weights. I would take these 250. You know, the boss was in the little shanty there watching. And of course, if you give a lazy man a job, I will find an easier way to do it. And we had this contraption that looked like a giant cultiv uh, cultivator wheels and had a hook in the front and a long stick. And you'd bring this baby in with a hook and you'd hook it into the little weight and out here with the leverage you go and then I would drive that baby on there. How do you know 250 pounds still weighs a lot when you have a long stick? <laughs> and I would put it in there, oh, about 10 or 10,000 pounds at 250 a piece. He said, put it in the middle. All right, now take it off and put it in the corners. It got to be a little sweaty. And I began to think, Lord, how are you with me in this? And he says, well... I was a carpenter. We'd cut a lot of stone, and we moved a lot of block. Right now, I'm building a house for you. <laughs> I think I can relate to the sweat and toil and work. I thought, yeah, all right. When I read the scripture and I see how he was, Hebrews chapter 4 says he was touched to the feelings of our infirmities. Do you realize that Jesus got tired at the end of a day? He got pooped out. Uh, he, in some places, he, you know, it says he had no place to lay his head. I imagine sometimes he went out to pray and the disciples were out in the boat. And, you know, I know he prayed to the Father, but, you know, I, I would imagine maybe he took a little happy nappy too. I don't know. And then he would go and walk and find the disciples where they were in their distress and he would heal them or he would help them or he would calm the wind and the waves. Because he knew the things that trouble my heart and your heart. And he was concerned. And he had taken on the form of a servant. He took on this fleshly nature. And he said, you know what? I can be at one place at one time. Boy, you know what? It's important I go back to the Father so we can send the Holy Spirit to be with you all, everywhere all the time. And so right now, what is Jesus doing? The Bible says he, he liveth evermore to make intercession for us. Right now, he is praying for you to make it at the right hand of the Father. He's right there in the presence of God, interceding for you and I to make it. He's still working. And I'll tell you what, I have had my share of manual labor. I have slung brick. I tested the scales at the Empire Chicken Coaster Poultry Plant. You talk about a smelly job that was ripe. We wanted to burn our clothes every time we came out of the. It was putrid. Get in there and test the scales, make sure your chicken is right. It's where they cut the chickens and bleed the chickens and pluck the chickens and gut the chick, you know what I mean? For those of you who know what I'm talking about, PU. And sometimes we get just that messy too, don't we? We make messes of our lives by our behavior. And I can't help to think that Jesus says, I'll help you. Come over here. We need to clean you with the word. Get, whew, well, you smell much better now. And he helps us. And he takes us like we are and he makes us what we ought to be. But see, he, he was touched. We, we sometimes have sanitized this thing, Emmanuel, God is with us, but he knows the slop that we go through. He knows the things that we're going through. He knows what it's like to be under, misunderstood. He knows what it is to have everybody against you. He knows what it's like to walk into the house of God and say, nothing's right here. Hope that's not true here, but you know what I mean. Stuff that didn't look right, didn't smell right. Isaiah says he was a, a man of sorrows. That doesn't mean he went around crying all the time. But he saw 
the awfulness of who we were. Remember when he prays over Jerusalem, he says, oh, it's, the Bible says he, he looked over Jerusalem and he wept because they just weren't getting it. It's, basically, he says, hey, listen, I came to them and they're not getting it. And they're not getting it. He wept over Jerusalem. How many times would I help you if you would have just trusted me? See, Jesus wrestled with the same stuff that you and I do. He was totally human. He was involved with the real world where we live. He sees this lady who spent all her money on late night infomercials. Send in $29.95 and we'll give you a free month supply too. And she did. And now the lady has no money and her problem is still there. And Jesus says, it's not about the money, but if you trust me, I, I can heal you. And he heals this lady that had this issue of blood for a long time. Years and years and years. You know what? We go running after all kinds of stuff to fix us instead of Jesus, don't we? And he says, I can help you. And it's not about your money. God will certainly take your money and use it. Don't get me wrong. But you're never going to buy the blessing of the Lord. That's not for sale. That's for free. He goes around to these guys who can't see at all. We have made them physically blind, but he works with the spiritually blind too. He, he works with people who think they know a lot and don't know squat. Educated people. People who know so much they forget about God and the simplicity of his word. And he goes and he says, I can heal you if you'll be obedient. Go ahead, take, just take a dip in the water over here. Be all right. It was not the water that healed. It was the obedience of that person trusting God at his word that healed him. It was God who healed him. And so Jesus walks around and he sees people who are blind he sees this guy who's laying by the water who has the wrong idea that if I get in that pool at just the right time, God's going to heal me. And Jesus says, do you want to be healed? Duh, yeah. All right, well, pick your bed up and let's get out of here. And the guy does. Jesus came and he walked right where we walk and he saw stuff that we miss and he brought the power of God who is available to all of us and he does some wild stuff. He steps out of our comfort zone. Later on in Matthew, chapter 8, people demon-possessed. And people, this leper says, the, you know, he, he just had no help and he heals them. Did Jesus care about? Now the big thing in the assemblies of God is we need to be concerned about the social issues of man. How do you know we've already been there? How do you know God cares about the poor? Huh? He, he's concerned about economic issues, isn't he? He's, a, he, he's concerned about America that's messed up right now. I believe that. We sometimes think that America has to heal itself. America cannot heal itself. We have to have a, a manual. We need outside intervention in this deal. Amen. We need the power of God to touch the church first and then to touch this world. <coughs> Just a thought. He's concerned about uh, religious problems we face today. I'll let you think about that. What are the religious problems we face today? Church A doesn't talk to Church B. Church C says we're the only ones going. Church D says God lives at our place. Oh, that, was that too spiritual for you? Did I, did I not break that down? <laughs> A little over the head. And God says, you know, I have believers 
in many churches at different phases. And, and, you know, just we come to church to hear about him. But if this is the only input you're having, I feel bad for you. <laughs> I mean, I'm glad that you're here. But you need more than one input a year or a week or, you know, Christmas Eve. I hope the girl shows. <laughs> My problem is I might not recognize her. He cur- you know what? The text of our message today, he saw this world so messed up. He says, you know the problem? You're out of relationship with God. I'll come and heal these people. I'll save them from their sin. Isn't that right, the very focal point of where our nation is messed up? If my people who call my name, my name will humble themselves and pray, will get down on their knees and really ask God, then will I hear from heaven? Huh? Then will I heal their land? Are we? Do we do our part? You know, if we'll confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us. Do you think America can confess their sins? We have enough time in this world. <laughs> What did he come to do? To seek and save that which is lost? So Jesus had one primary mission. To restore the relationship of man to God. So he said, I'll come to where you are because you can't come to where I am. Emmanuel, God with us. And his name will be called Jesus, God with us. And he says, you know what? I have come that they might have misery and sadness the rest of their life. I have come that they might have life and they might have, I'm hinting, joy, right? Huh? And abundantly, life and abundant joy and life together. What good is it if we have to phone in our life? Or it's just a game that you have a little spinner. It's okay to have six kids there, but boy, you know, it's a, it is, can be uh, exciting to have six kids here. And so he comes with the joy of all of heaven for us. And the big question is, so he comes and he's got all of heaven available. What good is it if we do not receive him? All the hope of the world, all the hope of eternity, God with us. You know, I just realized that thing stopped at 1025. No wonder this sermon's gone so long. I saw two people going, okay. Come in for a landing, Jeff. I mean, no, take a look. It's at 1024 now, 2028. <coughs> What good is it if God has made every provision for us and we've never received? If God has a plan for your life, what good is it if God has a plan for your life if you never walk the plan? What good is it if God has a purpose for your life and you say, "Eh, so what? I'm going to do what I want to do. See, for God to be with us means I also have to be with God. I have to get on his page, if you please. The vernacular today is, I've got to do what he needs me to do. I need to be who he needs me to be. You know, the the vernacular says, it is what it is. I'm sort of getting tired of that phrase. Remember one time we were taking a trip with the teenagers, and someone said, where are we? And the one kid says, we're almost where we're at. (laughs) And I'm not quite sure if he was there. Is that true, isn't it? And I'm going like, well, veer off the road, you know. Yeah. We're almost where we're at. I wasn't quite sure what that means. But I can understand this. God is with me. See, he equally identifies with me today. He took on this physical form for me today. He died on the cross for me today. All the angst and all the things that Mary was feeling and, and the awe and the wonder. He wants me to be filled with awe and wonder. 
I get upset with that sometimes because I'm not in control. Yeah, you know, it's okay if you get out of control as long as God's in control. When God's not in control and you're out of control, you're messed up. But it's okay if we purposely abandon ourselves to the will of God. Really, that's what God says to Joseph in the dream. Joseph, I've got a plan. Joseph, I've got a man. Joseph, I have a savior. Joseph, I'm giving you my son. Joseph, trust him. Got that, Joe? Pretty much the same with you and me. God says, I have a plan for your life. I have a son who will be your savior. Will you trust me to be God with you? Will you trust me to be Emmanuel? Will you trust me to... To, that's why we need the Holy Spirit. Jesus took on this form, and he says, you know what, I've limited myself to a certain degree, but I'm going to send someone else. As soon as you see him, you're going to recognize my presence. We're going to be exact. You are going to fall right in line. He, everything he says is going to point to me. You'll be okay if you trust the power of the Holy Spirit in your life. Because he will always, whenever the Holy Spirit is at work in your life, he will always point you to Jesus. Always. He will always point you to hope and help. Always. He will always point you to the truth and bring the word of God to life. And always. And he will abide with you. He'll comfort you when you're messed up. He'll walk with you in the hard places that you cannot understand. And the disappointments of life are not an end but a comma. It's not a period at the end of the sentence. Oh, case closed, JLG forever. And even when the hope was for JLG forever, God says, I've got a better way. Today he wants to be Emmanuel, God with you. Will you receive him? Will you bow your heads for a moment? The wild thing is when we read the Bible, it says Jesus came to his own. And it goes on and says, they received him not. Yeah. They did not want God to work in their life. They did not see a purpose. They didn't really understand how much God wants the very best for them. But maybe today you and I can see by looking back, Joseph was totally confused. But he says, I'll trust you, God, that you know what's right. Will you Say today, I trust you, God, that I know that you know what's right, even if I can't see what's coming down the line. Even if maybe God has put a dream in your heart as a little child, like you did Stacy. You say, I can't ever see this happening. I, I have a God who fans those dreams to flame. I have a God who can have someone else pay for you to go to college. How's that? I have a God who, who hasn't quit thinking about you. And he's here today. God with us. God with me. God with you. You say, I'm not with God right now. I'm not right with God. If God, if I were to die now, I'm not, I'm not sure I'm going to heaven. You can be, by receiving him. If you're here today and your heart is not right with God, you can say, hey, that's me. Hey, there's no shame in that. That's being smart. Say, I need God to come into my life and forgive me. You've maybe come here the first time. You've been here a lot of times. Say, that's me. I need someone to pray with me. I need someone to believe God with me. I need to ask him to be my savior. You're here today. You slip your hand up so I can see it. So I know how to pray for you. And we want to encourage you to get things right with God. Anyone at all, pretty much family, amen. I see your hand saying, I, I'm trying to get something right with God. Would you all join me as we just encourage this one person to pray out loud? You join me. 
in this simple prayer. Just repeat after me. Dear Jesus, come into my heart. Be God who is with me today. Forgive me for my sin and help me to walk with you and allow you to be Emmanuel in my life. I receive you as my Savior. Help me to walk after you. I pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Now the Bible says when we confess with our mouth, we shall be saved. And that one person I just want to say to you, you need to tell someone, we're available, we'll pray with you again. And it's not that the first prayer wasn't good. We just want to agree with you and say, God, you're at work. How many of us as believers sometimes forget God is with us? And you just want to say, thank you, Lord, for reminding me today. Why don't we just raise our hands right now? Lord, we want to thank you for reminding us that you are with us today and that you want to be God, Emmanuel, with me today. Help me to walk in the assurance that you are working in me. Lord, help me to be sensitive to your spirit and listening for that still small voice that guides me into truth and righteous living. Lord, with my hands lifted up, I praise you now and thank you and thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. The song that Sister Marie was playing, would you stand with me and sing? He is here. Hallelujah. He is here. Amen. He is here. Holy, holy. I will bless his name again. He is here. Listen closely. Hear him call. Ling out your name. He is here. You can touch him. You will never be the same. I'm so glad I don't want I don't want to be the same, do you? I'm so glad that he is here. He took on flesh and he dwelt among us. And he wants to continue to walk with us. Heavenly Father, as we take steps in this world, remind us that you're Emmanuel, God with us. Remind us that you're Emmanuel, that a God who works in us. And that you're a God who is so present, you want to touch our neighbors and our friends with your power and your strength. So you're the God who works through us. Lord, as we walk in this holiday season, May we be so sensitive to the work that you want to work in us. And we say yes to you today. Yes to you, Lord Jesus. Yes to your way. In Jesus' name we pray these things. Amen. And amen.